Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to season number one. In this season, I'm excited. We got Tess Hackworthy, who's from the University of Wisconsin, uh, a teammate, former teammate of some of my students. I've known Tess for a long time. Uh, I'm excited to dive into this with her. She's an aspiring LPGA player, um, has a little status on the Symmetra Tour, but we don't know how much she's gonna get to play this year. So I'm really excited to kind of peel the layers back and give you an inside look and in, you know, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna educate her on her mental golf type, and really just see kind of the process of what this takes for a player of that level, you know, to get there. And you're going to see really behind the scenes of everything we are going to do. Uh, Tess is a totally awesome girl. Um, she's very entertaining, so this will be a fun season to do. But excited to dive into this, and we're going to get right into this coming up right now. I am Tess Hackworthy. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I recently graduated from the University of Wisconsin's women's golf team. I just made it. Hi. Come on, Tess. William Buck. <laughs> low, baby, low. Go low show. Oh my god, there's a bogus box. Smetch tour schedule is out. I turned professional in May and I'm super excited, but I have a ton of goals leading into this. So first and foremost, um, I just, I know from Q school and I learned from Q school in 2019 that everyone out here has the talent. Um, I mean, there are a lot of really good golfers out here. However, the question is, like, who has it between here? Um, who has it between their ears? And that's one thing that I really want to get better at. I got a lot going on in here. I, Should I, like, breathe out or something? Breaths out. Before I swing? Yeah, that helps. Relax a little? You can relax. And I really think that Kyle and MGT can really help me with that. And I'm really looking forward to investing my time. Another goal that I really have in my professional career is to be a lot more organized and deliberate about my practice. You know, in college, someone was always there to plan my practices for me, and it was great. It was awesome. We had team goals. We had individual goals. But now I'm on my own, and this is me, and we're all out here fighting for ourselves. And I know that Kyle and MGT can really help me organize my practice, set those little goals, set those PRs, and figure out ways that can get me to that next level. So how can I hone in on my short game, hone in on my process, hone in on my putting, and I really, I'm excited to kind of see where that takes me as I start to get more detailed, um, more organized, and just like a lot more productive in my practice. Yeah, more embracing the pressure. Well, yeah. Than so like being fearful of it. Right. It's like you're you're doing all this and beating this personal best because you're you're training to win. Yeah. You're training to overcome these situations. That's what you're doing. Um, and along those lines, something that might be holding me back in my practice is a little bit of accountability. Honestly, I had coach, college coaches, I had teammates all constantly pushing me at practice on the golf course, off the golf course. And right now, like I said, I'm on my own in my professional career. And so I need that person to hold me accountable and to help push me to reach those goals and honestly someone to help me find my potential and you know oftentimes we think we we can reach goal a but really we have the potential to reach an, an even higher level goal b and so you know who is that person and I really think that Kyle and MJT can really help me reach that goal and um you know help me find more what i need to, to push me to be better in my career so i'm super excited about this journey and i'm willing to put in the time and energy because quite honestly that's what it's going to take time and 
energy, someone to hold you accountable, and a ton of commitment. So, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoy and are following my journey. You know, Tess is an ENFJ, the competitive teacher. And if you know Tess and you see through these episodes, she's super competitive. And you know, but she's also a very people person, like she likes to help others and, and so forth. So it's very fitting. And you know, with her, like, so she's extroverted, she's intuitive, uh, she's a feeler and she's a judger. So like these facets are gonna play a big role. So for example, like, with extroverts, they're gonna to tend to get kind of quiet when they're in stress. I had to be completely silent because I didn't know anyone around me. I had an okay warm up, and I didn't play as great. You know, intuitives are really good when they see bigger zones and they're more focused on the target, but the problem is when they don't play their best and they get stressed, they typically start not looking at the target and focusing more on the swing. I don't look at the target very much, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm just trying to improve from my last swing. So I'll like think of something mechanically that I know I need to improve to make that swing better. You know, feelers that tend to be a little more go by their gut type people versus, you know, really using too much data and too much facts. Off. So I'm gonna choke up on the club a little bit more. I'm probably gonna aim a little more right to right of my target. I might even go down a club so I'm not as lofted. Um, I'm going to pick my landing spot and knowing that the wind is into me, it may not, depending on how strong the wind, like it may not fly or roll out as much. Um, I'm going to think about like the firmness of the greens and the break from there. Okay. Um, do you think about all that when you hit a shot from like 140 yards? No. Which one are you better at? I don't know. 140 yards is a great number for me. You don't want to answer because you know where I'm going with that. <laughs> so the judging side of her, she needs structure if she's going to get pretty loose. You know, and as much as most people think they need that, it's not really the best for everybody. But, you know, the thing is now is like when she is going to be at her worst and she's going to waste the most amount of time, she doesn't have a plan and she starts to act kind of more like me it was just a little more out of order in things and she won't get a lot done so with her throughout this episode we're going to make sure that she has to have a very regimented practice plan and we're going to go over what that takes with with her and you know the biggest thing is just getting her to understand some of these things that she typically does and how to flip that and put her into her best mode and we're going to build her process around that and you're going to see the whole entire work and transformation around this how mental golf type is so powerful I like, I like feeling that walk into the ball with my driver. Like those couple steps are like, it's very good mental prep for me. Walking mm. it's so usually into the same the rhythm. Details of things, I like that. I'm just pointing out how things are, some things are different here. So. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, so you're probably I mean, if it, four or five steps behind the ball here, where the iron, you were like, maybe a step away from it just inside right right now it's just upsetting that i'm i have a nine iron in my hand and i still leave myself 30 foot 35 feet putt for worry like i'll look out at a target and i'm like shit i'm nowhere like that doesn't look right so then i step back and i usually put a stake down and kind of see where I'm at and then you know one of the challenges with tests and with any player really at this level is you know they've trained to do something a certain way for so long and she can obviously do okay with that um, and you can you can play okay with kind of the non-dominant facets of your personality but you, like it's hard to always be at your best because essentially you're always in some level of stress and it's just hard to get in that optimal state which is why players have such a hard time finding the zone until they're almost just like getting that like well just screw it mentality you know f it um, and sometimes we just play lights out because we just rid all of the stress. And that's what this is all about, is learning how to get rid of stress and not play in that level of almost fight or flight. 
All right, thanks for watching Quest to Be the Best with Tess Halfworthy. In the coming episodes, we've got so much to show you, and we're going to show you Tess and I working together. Um, she's going to be coming in town to do some work in person. Uh, we're going to do a lot of cool things there to help build this process, and you're going to see it really all in action. So instead of just necessarily talking about it, you're going to see it really come to life. So keep following these episodes. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you are notified when new episodes drop. But we're going to keep grinding with Tess. We're going to help her get to a high level in her professional career. And we're excited that you're following along with the journey. So until the next episode, we will see you then. When I hired that one caddy, and on the first hole he says, okay, just don't hit it right <laughs> because it's dead. What do I do? Hit it right. Yeah. Yeah, because... I fired that guy. <laughs>